My name is Dr. Mannan, an assistant professor in mechatronics engineering department at uh, UT Texla. Today I'd, be, I'd present mobile robots. So let's begin. These, this is my educational background. I'd upload my dis this discussion on YouTube channel. So if you have any comments, please, uh, yeah, please write it down below. Sorry. This is chapter number 11. Let me correct that. And these are the contents of chapter number 11. It is from the book uh, Robotics, Robot Modeling by Professor Siciliano. Um, I'll only talk about, uh, I'll only give introduction and on holonomic constraints, kinematic, kinematic model, chain form, dynamic model, planning, motion control, and autometric localization will be discussed later. Um, so let's begin with the with an introduction. Um, first of all, why mobile robots? The main feature of mobile robot is the presence of mobile base, which allows the robot to move freely in in, 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 in any environment, unlike manipulators. Um, such robots are mostly used in service applications where extensive autonomous motion capabilities are required. Um, from a mechanical viewpoint, viewpoint a, mobile, uh, a mobile robot consists of one or more rigid bodies equipped with locomotion system. And this description includes the following two main classes of mobile robots. Uh, one is wheeled mobile robot, which you can see over here. And it typically consists of rigid body base or chassis, like this one, and a system of wheels, uh, uh, like here, which provide motion with respect to the ground. Other uh, rigid bodies, tailors, uh, also equipped with the wheels may be connected. So. Um, other rigid bodies may also be connected um, by any means of joints. Then we have uh, legged mobile robots. These are made of uh, multiple rigid bodies interconnected by prismatic joints or more often by revolute joints. Some of these bodies uh, form a lower limbs whose extremities, feet, extremities which are feet periodically come in contact with the ground. To realize locomotion. Um, there is a large variety of mechanical structures in this class whose design is often inspired by the study of living organisms like uh, bio, so it's also known as biomimetic robotics. Mm, these robots range from biped humanoids to hexapods robots aimed at replicating the biomechanical efficiency of insects. So you could see that um, this is humanoid robot. Let me zoom that for you. So humanoid robot is still learning how to walk. And open challenges with mobile robots is uh, to how to walk, how to run, how to avoid uh, obstacles, how to map the surroundings. There are many open challenges, many open problems in, in uh, mobile robots. Now I'm going to discuss about non-holonomic constraints. So let's go. Uh, so first of all, what is what are non-holonomic constraints? Um, basically, any wheeled vehicle is subject to kinematic constraints that reduce, in general, its local mobility while leaving the intact while leaving intact the possibility of reaching arbitrary configurations by appropriate maneuvers. So, for example, a robot cannot um, move sideways and uh, vice versa. Um, you can, every driver knows by experience that while it is impossible to move instantaneously a car in the direction orthogonal to its heading. So, it means you need to, if this is the heading, the car cannot move orthogonal to it, which is like perpendicular to its heading. Uh, but it is still possible to park it arbitrarily. So, for example, if uh, the driver wants to car wants to park the car, which is heading, which is having, uh, which is uh, um, having, the, which is having the direction in this way, can uh, all can be parked in this direction. So, just like this, and then and then in this way, um, it is. Um, Parking in the car in any arbitrary position is uh, quite possible. Everybody knows that. 
and so it is very important to analyze in detail the structure of these concerns so uh, what are behavior of these structures is really important so basically there are many different types of constraints uh, so let's begin with that uh, first of all equality constraints which are called uh, bilateral constraints then we have inequality constraint which mean unilateral constraints then we have time dependent constraints which we call ranomic and then uh, not time dependent constraints which call uh, and then we have not time dependent constraints which are called sectoronomic constraints so um, our focus uh, would be on bilateral sectoronomic constraints which mean equality constraint which are not time dependent um, but here i want to add that um, basically holonomic constraints are generally the result of mechanical interconnections between the various bodies of the system for example prismatic and revolute joints used in robot manipulators are typical source of such constraints and joint variables are in an example of um, reduced set of coordinates in the above sense constraints uh, of the form which are like this equation 11.1 may also arise in particular operating conditions for example one may mention the case of kinematically redundant manipulator that moves while keeping the end effector fixed at a certain pole which is called self motion so uh, these uh, uh, constraints may also arise so if the if um so let's uh, come back over here constraints then can be put in the form uh, hi a function of q joint variables equals to 0 where i starts from 1 down to k is less than n so n degree of freedom and there is k which is less than n if we have these kinds of um, this kind of function which makes configuration equal to 0 this uh, the, the constraints uh, uh, developed by this equation uh, is known as holonomic constraint the, it means holonomic or integrable in the following it is assumed that the function hi uh, is just a mapping which maps configuration um, which maps uh, joint configuration into real space it, it is a class of c infinity which means continuous up to infinite derivatives smooth and independent the effect of holonomic constraints is to reduce the space of accessible configurations to a subset of c with dimensions n minus k so um, it is that kind of um, constraint which uh, reduces the space of accessibility um, i explain it you i think you could get it in my later explanation so basically it just um, limits the accessible configuration with dimension definitely n minus k where it's um, become where it becomes equal to zero where, where it becomes zero so uh, constraints that involve generalized coordinates and velocities like uh, this one in which k is less than n are called kinematic constraints and, and kinematic constraints are generally expressed in faffin form okay so what is the faffin form that is they are linear in the generalized velocities so for example if we have a i which is a function of q then it's going to be it's going to be multiplied with q dot and it's going to going to be equal to zero so uh, if this is the constraint if this kind of constraint we have it means we have kinematic constraints where vectors a i is just a function which maps uh, configuration joint configuration into some real uh, number of uh, n real vector of n dimension and this function is assumed to be smooth as well as linearly independent um, if we take derivative of um, this um, if we take derivative of holonomic constraints uh, we gonna we get this this kind of stuff and it's going to be equal to zero so important thing is that uh, you could uh, you could relate this in this term with this term okay so this is going to be equal to zero although the differentiation of holonomic constraints remain equal to zero and it means that its integral will formulate the constraint so it means it's going to be it's it's it's, it's going it's, it would remain zero so if you're going to 
if you're going to integrate it, it's still going to be activated like this. It's going to, it's going to, this equation is still going to be the true. It's still going to be true. And in general, the integration of uh, kinematic constraints may not be available. But uh, for many other applications, this thing may not be available. Okay, if these constraints are not integrable, they are they are called as non-holonomic constraints. So if this constraint is integrable, it means holonomic constraint. If it is not integrable, it means it's a non-holonomic constraint, which means non-integrable constraint. So consider a single Pfaffian constraint, um, which is just a multiplication of AI transpose function of Q with Q dot. It's going to be equal to zero. If the constraint is holonomic, it can be integrated and written as h of q is equal to c, some constant function, where um, partial h by partial q is going to be equal to gamma function of q and a transpose q with gamma of q not equal to zero, and uh, which is an integrating factor, and c is an integration constant. So um, this we can pretty much write this equation into this form. Okay, so um, that's how we're gonna get this equation. Uh, the typical um, so uh, because of this, uh, uh, there is a loss of accessibility in configuration space because the motion of the mechanical system in C is confined to particular level surface of the scalar function h. Uh, this surface which depends on the initial configuration q0 through the value of uh, definitely hq of 0 equal to c initial condition is going to be equal to c uh, has dimension n minus 1 sorry has dimension n minus 1 so uh, uh, that is the reason the, there is a loss of accessibility the typical example include now you, it, will, it will be quite clear that typical examples include a particular constraint to lie on a plane or on a sphere like simple pendulum and robot with prismatic joints so if a simple uh, in a simple pendulum robot cannot um, leave its end effector position so if it wants to change its end effector um, for example if it is a two link robot and uh, a link uh, with the link length one meter one unit and one unit it's not it's not possible to reach at the position of 0.5 okay of 0.5 of the length one although this is quite possible that a uh, position of 0.5 at x and y equals to zero is possible by having some difficult uh, by having some uh, complicated uh, structure uh, complicated configuration or some uh, dip, some um, some possible it is quite possible to achieve 0.5 x0 and uh, 0 y, y um, 0 y but it is not possible to have this uh, while keeping the robot uh, in a straight line so this is that's kind of um, constraint is called uh, holonomic constraint and it, another example includes a particle suspended from a torch spring or particle on a, on a spinning platter so torch spring is like um, so um, a torch spring is a spring which is stretched. So so particles suspended from a torch spring uh, are uh, are uh, are an example of non-holonomic constraint. So it means that although they can move up and down or sideways, it is um, yeah they are going to remain in that they are going to remain on that line it's not possible for them to change the position or change or move sideways and um, uh, in the same way particles spinning on particles on spinning platter which is which is like a, um, a disc rotating at very high speed so all the uh, particles on spinning platter um, would always be on that uh, uh, disc and it is not possible for those article those particles to leave that disk. So these are typical examples of non-holonomic constraints. So um, the conclusion just drawn for the case of a single constraint is general. An n-dimensional um, mechanical system subject to k non-holonomic constraints 
can access its whole configuration space C. Okay, although at any configuration its generalized velocities must belong to an n minus k dimensional subspace. So it means that um, although uh, the whole configuration space is accessible, but velocities must belong to an n minus k dimensional subspace. So not all the velocities are possible and uh, it's not possible for those velocities to deviate from this uh, condition. Uh, again, the example is simple pendulum. The end effector uh, of, of a pendulum would always be on some, you know, some surface or some uh, line. It's not possible for the pendulum uh, at the end, the particles at the end of the pendulum to leave that uh, particular uh, surface. So that is why it's called an n minus k dimensional subspace. The velocities must belong to the space. So in the presence of Fafin kinematic constraints, um, integrability conditions can be used to decide whether the system is holonomic or non-holonomic. So consider the first case of single Fafin constraint. So we have uh, A transpose function of Q and then Q dot is going to be equal to zero. For this constraint to be integrable, there must exist a scalar function h of Q and an integrating factor gamma of q equals to 0 such that the following condition holds uh, gamma of q if multiplied with a of j of k is going to be equal to a partial h with partial qj so um, this condition this condition must hold um, by using schwartz theorem which is um, you can google it out by using Schwarz theorem on the symmetry of second derivatives, the integrability condition 11.8 may be replaced by the following system of partial differentiation equation, where partial differentiation of gamma a of k uh, differentiated with respect to partial uh, qj is equal to partial uh, is equal to gamma a j rather partial of k. So it's basically um, this uh, short theorem is uh, describing that if you would change if it okay let me go through this uh, short theorem so what is short theorem let's say that there is a function which maps r n into n which is uh, some matrix or some vector of uh, uh, which contains real values of and uh, dimension of vector is r and dimension of vector is n um, that it, it, and so if this uh, there is a function and it has a continuous second partial derivatives at any given point in Rn say for example a1 to a n and then for all i and j that belongs to 1 down to n uh, we know that second derivative of f is going to be equal to x1 and xj and 1 down to n and it's also going to be equal to second derivative if we differentiate with respect to j and i so these things are going to be equal to these things are going to be equal. So whether you differentiate with respect to x, first i and then j, it does not make any difference whether if you differentiate the same thing with respect to j and then i, and then i later. So th that's the position, that's the, uh, the Schwarz theorem, and I think it makes sense. So it does not make any difference if you differentiate it with respect to j or with respect to k. So it's going to be, it's going to remain the same. So uh, by using Schwarz theorem on the symmetry of second derivatives, the integrability condition 11.8 may be replaced by the following system of partial differentiation equation. Um, this one, which does not contain the unknown function h of q. It is important to note that the condition 11.9 uh, means that Fafin constraint with constant coefficient um, a of j is always holonomic. So if um, if the coefficient is constant, then it's always going to be holonomic. So I'm sorry, this is going to be equal to zero. So let me just correct it. So now I have corrected it. So these um, two things are going to be equal, and uh, these two things do not contain the unknown function h of q. So um. 
the situation becomes more complicated when dealing with a system of k greater than 1 kinematic constraints of the form 11.3 which is equal which is uh, just like this one okay this one In fact, in this case, it may happen that the single constraints are not integrable if taken separately, but the whole system is integrable. In particular, if um, some p is less than k, which, uh, in, if, if p less than k, independent linear combinations of the constraints formulate constraints. This thing. these kind of, of the constraints in this form are integrable there exists there exists p independent scale when there exists p independent scalar functions uh, in h j of k such that span of all the derivatives from h1 down to hp with respect to q being uh, uh, and the derivative derivative is being taken with respect to q is gonna be this um, so this um, the span of span of set of these uh, values is going to be proper subset of span of uh, this uh, these values so it's just going to be the proper subset of uh, these values for all q that belongs to configuration configuration space therefore the configurations that are accessible for mechanical system belong to d and minus p dimensional subspace consisting of the particular level surface of the function h of q so q belongs to configuration space and h1 of q belongs to c1 configuration space and so on hp belongs to pp on which the motion is started in so um, this is the file these are the sur um, surfaces on which the motion is started in the case of p equals to k, the system of kinematic constraint 11.3 is completely integrable and hence holonomic. Um, so there are some possibilities that some of the constraints are not integrable, but as a whole, uh, it is quite possible that these things are integrable. That is the end of my today's discussion. It is uh, based on uh, I have covered introduction and I have discussed integrability conditions. If you have any comment or some problem, please write down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you for your time.